Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We have a uh, John Deere D110. We're gonna be, uh, hopefully it'll go smooth, but I'm gonna show you how to take, take off a tire on a tractor and install a new tire. Uh, we have some tools that we need here. One, definitely gonna need a brand new tire. Now these tires, when we get them, they're usually pretty much squished. So I put this in, in front of a heater. And it's the middle of uh, February right now where I live, so it's a little bit cold and these things get real real hard to uh, install. So putting them in front of a heater makes them flexible. So that's the tire we're gonna put on. We have some tools here. Um, I use, a, it's a, basically a pry bar that I've actually grinded smooth and actually made it so it's not so pointy. Couple screwdrivers here, pair of pliers, a nice little hook tool here to pull off the cap. This is just an air, um, you're gonna need some kind of a compressed air scenario to get the tire back on and inflated. Air chuck, this is a tool to take the valve stem out, which actually makes it easier to remove the valve stem and um, just get it back together again. You have a tire pressure gauge, a little bit of soap. Jack, um, not sure, a real easy way to uh, pick these up. The jack definitely helps. I put the jack right underneath the part of the mower deck where it actually has the front of the mower deck held up with the rod here. It's a pretty good stationary point and it usually doesn't bend. So I just jack it up, get the tire off the ground just a little bit. Then I use the heat and when it's real cold outside, these things are very, very hard, these caps. So I put a little heat on it, just enough heat to get this cap. And you gotta be really careful because if you overdo it, it, you can see where this cap's actually started turning colors from probably from the grease that's in there too but they get hot too hot sometimes and they turn colors but i'm pretty sure that just turned colors on its own because we are basically just trying to heat up this cap it's pretty cold and these caps get very hard and even if it's warm outside and the caps are extremely hard if you want to try to keep the cap from getting ripped up they're not too much money at the john deere dealership but we try to reuse them if we can and I did forget one big important thing is we need a lot of rags because there's going to be a lot of grease in this scenario. I used a little hook tool, pry it off, and it should pop out just like that. Now there's a lot of grease in here because we've been servicing it and you got to grease those bearings a lot. They are not bearings that you would normally see in the old John Deere's where there's actually ball bearings in them. These are actually bushings. Now, I'm getting the grease off of this so I can show you. This has a C-clip on it. Some of them had C-clips and some of them had little holes. Use a flat screwdriver. This is a C-clip. You just find the, the hole there and you can pop this out. And be careful because if you don't have a place where you're doing it, these may shoot out and go all over the place. But take the clip out, put it aside. You have usually have a washer or two on the front side and then you can just slide your wheel off be careful on the back side of your wheels a lot of times just like this they have a washer that sticks to it so i usually put that washer back on the shaft all right and i'm just going to try to get rid of some of this grease so when we take the tire off it's not going to be such a mess so just try to clean up everything and you can also check your wear and tear on the bushing right here all right this is just a bushing and basically how you check it is you put it back on the shaft here and you just wobble it back and forth. This one here has hardly any play at all because it's been been greased every year since he owned it and there's hardly any play side to side. Awesome stuff. All right, now you wanna take the air out of the tire. And I know you guys at home probably won't have this tool that I'm actually gonna show you is that I have a slap hammer to get the, the, the bead off the tire. And you guys may be able to figure out other ways take it off. The first thing you do is take cap off. My valve stem tool, I'm going to take the valve stem out. Get rid of all the oil, or get rid of all the air. Now you can probably use a hammer and a wedge. I have a uh, nice tool I've been using for years. It's my slap hammer. Okay. This is a very nice tool to have. I had it for 20 years and it's Basically, you just put it right in the rim in the tire, give it a nice slap, takes the bead right off, flip it over, put it right in the wedge there, slap it, take the other side. Now we have that off, I flip it over. I always work on the valve stem side, 
Make sure you don't lose your valve stem and your caps. Now, how I do it is push the tire in. I always have my knee on it, so I get the tire in as far as I can to the, to the rim. And I just pry them off with your screwdrivers. First one up. I always use about two or three screwdrivers. And you gotta be careful you don't scratch it up the best you can, but it's gonna happen at some point. If the tires are real pliable, it should be pretty easy. This one is extremely pliable, so it is a lot easier. Should we pop it up here. And then getting the inside off sometimes can be a little tricky. I usually go by the back side. Same scenario. Get your screwdriver in there. Guys again. Now I gotta get, hold this one in here a little bit at a time. I'm just prying it and eventually the rim should pop out. Like that. All right, one old tire down, new tire. There's normally not a direction they go. I haven't seen a tractor tire actually directional other than like back tires, big back tires. You can put a little bit of probably a little bit of Windex or maybe some Simple Green to make it a little bit easier going on. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. If it gets too slippery, then it's really hard to get these tires on. I'm gonna try it without it first. Just pushing down on top. And then you get your, you wanna get the inside first. And just take, I call it baby steps, but just take a little bit of bite at a time. And I'm not using the simple green because the tire actually is sticking better to the rim. All right, so that went on. And I put my knee on inside here, push it in. I like to have the, the tire bead in as far on the rim as I can get it. And then start over a little bit at a time. This went on very easily. Now the hard part sometimes can be getting air in these tires. You gotta try to get the lip to seal around here. I've seen guys where they put some kind of a seal around here. Most of the time you don't need that. And the back side here will get an air gap. This one's working out pretty good right now. Just uh, you can see the air gap here. Sometimes it won't pop out. That's why it's nice to use compressed air. If you, can, if you have compressed air, it's definitely gonna work better. We're gonna use that here at the shop. That's where I had the nozzle. All right, so I don't have my valve stem in there yet. All right, so it's open. We have the nozzle here, the air nozzle. And I'm just gonna blow air right into where there's no, no needle valve right now. And actually, it just took air. So it's gonna come back out here. Since it just took air, I'm gonna put the valve back in. If you do it quickly enough, there's usually some air left in it. That'll keep the tire out. Give this thing to start. And then you go to your air truck. Get some air in it. And everybody asks what kind of tire pressure we running. Well, the tire says it. Usually the tire will say on it somewhere. Probably need a flashlight to see this. Um, maximum inflation is 30 psi, but that's not where you're going to be putting that. It usually says somewhere. No, this one's not saying it. Usually they're between 12 and 14 psi. I would not put this at 30 psi. I usually run front tires on tractors, especially uh, this is a 15 by 6 by 6. I usually run these about 16 psi. I don't go any higher than that, but just make sure your front tires are even. And we got everything seems to be sealed right there. We're gonna use the simple green now just to check for leaks. And you should have it up to pressure, which means 16 psi. 
is what I would use. But I mean, you can use whatever you want. Just don't go over to 30 PSI on this tire. I just said that. And no bubbles. I'm just not seeing any bubbles. I'm turned over. And I always shoot the valve stem just to make sure that that's in correctly. I got a little bit of, of a simple green right there. No bubbles, which means that's sealed correctly. All right, we're good. Get the air out of that. Just gonna hit this, hit this with a little bit of air. And your tire gauge. All right, that's a perfect 16. Put your cap back on. We got no leaks. Now we're ready to install it again. Right back over. You have the big washer. And then your C-clamp. And then what I do with the C-clip is I'll put it on. That's when your pair of pliers comes in handy. All right, just gonna use a pair of pliers. And just gently, if you don't do this quite right, it may shoot all over the place, so just gently clip it in. And then just check to make sure it's good. Our cap is actually a little bit stiff right now, but we'll see if it'll go on. Yeah, this one's gonna be a little, a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do is you gotta be really careful. You don't wanna set anything on fire. I'm just gonna heat up a little bit. Just a little bit of heat, not much. Just enough to get the flex. And I don't recommend everybody do this. This just is something that I do. Just makes it a little bit easier to get it to go on. And that's pretty much it. And don't forget to re-grease. You have a grease fitting on the inside right here. You wanna make sure you get that pumped up full of grease. Pretty much that's how you install a tire. Thanks for watching.